Hi there, this is module one, lesson three for eighth grade into math, and it's explore reflections. So let's dive right in and we'll look first at the I can statement. I can reflect a figure over either axis in the coordinate plane and describe the reflection algebraically. So we start with the spark you're learning. So don't forget, come back to the I can statement at the end of the lesson and see if you can say that. Okay, spark your learning. The word ambulance is often written backward on the front of ambulances so that it will appear forward in the rear view mirror of cars. So they have the word ambulance written here backwards. Use tracing paper to trace the word as it is shown above. What can you do with your result to make the word readable? So think about that, talk about that. What effect do your actions have on the order of the letters and what effect do your actions have on the individual letters themselves? So play around with that for a little bit. And then um, after you're done talking, you can restart the video and we'll head to the build understanding. All right, so let's look at build understanding. Again, they have a yellow box, which you know is important. And they have some highlighting within the yellow box, which tells you there are some important words or phrases that you need to think about. So they say a reflection is a transformation of a figure that flips the figure across a given line called the line of reflection. So that each point on the pre-image is the same distance from the line of reflection as the corresponding point on the image. So let's look at number one. How can you reflect a figure using tracing paper? Draw the letter N on a piece of tracing paper, then fold the paper over the diagonal and trace the N unfold the paper and you should see the original N and its reflection. So they've kind of given you an example here of what it kind of should look like. Um, so let's look at A. Find two line segments for the letter N that are parallel in the pre-image. So here's your pre-image and here's your image. That's the reflection over that diagonal line there. Um, are the corresponding segments in the image also parallel? So if, for example, if you pick this line and this line segment, the corresponding line segment for this one is here. No, Let's see right here. See, that's one thing about reflections. You have to make sure that you have the same line in the, in the image as you are talking about in the pre-image. And so then this line, it corresponds to this line. Um, so are they also parallel? And B, use a ruler to measure the length of a line segment in the pre-image, then measure the length of the corresponding line in the segment, line segment in the image. What do you notice about the length of the two segments? So in all of these questions, they're comparing the pre-image with the image, the corresponding parts that you're looking at. So C, they're going to have you measure an angle in the pre-image and the corresponding angle in the image. And what do you notice? What can you conclude about the way reflecting a figure affects side length, angle measure, and parallel line segments? And then E, look at the N and its image on the paper. What do you think the word reflection, or why do you think, excuse me, the word reflection is used to describe such an image? So think about all those things, pause the video, and then we'll move forward, but um, answer all the questions, talk about it, and then go ahead and go to the next section. Okay, so let's look at the Step It Out section. These two pages are both part of Step It Out. So the first thing they do is they're asking you, how can you reflect a figure over the x-axis or y-axis? So in each case, in this case, the x-axis will be the line of reflection. And if it's over the y-axis, the y-axis will be the line of reflection. So they say reflect the image shown over the x-axis. So now we're going to look at this image, kind of looks like the letter F, and we're going to reflect it over this x-axis, or you're going to. So remember, this is really important, they say to keep each point of the image, so each point of your image that you reflect over the x-axis, the same distance from the x-axis as the corresponding pre-image point. And they give you an example there, point C, is 12 units from the x-axis. So point C prime has to be 12 units along this same line here. It has to be 12 units from the x-axis down here. So at negative 12. 
so C prime would be down here. And so what they want you to do is label all these points reflecting it over the x axis and you'll they say remember using prime notation. So then they say, well actually pause the video and do that and then you'll be able to answer the rest of the questions or most of them. So the pre-image is upright. So it looks like the letter F. What they're asking now is, is this image that you've created from the pre-image reflection, is it also upright or has it changed? And then in C, they ask you to find the length of AC in the pre-image and then also find the length of A prime C prime. They want to know what do you think will happen and then find the length and see if you are correct. So pause the video and do those, and then we'll look at the next section, D and E and F. So for D, it says the original letter F faces to the right. Now they want you to reflect this image over the y-axis. So now think about where it might be, which quadrant. This is quadrant one, this is two, three, and four. So because you're reflecting over this y-axis, it's going to be here in quadrant two. So is it going to face the same direction? If not, how is it different? Label the points using the double prime notation. So that's this. So now you'll have A prime prime, B prime prime, C prime prime, and so on. So go ahead and pause the video and do that. Um, and then E, they have this table. They want you to fill in all these coordinates for the points that you have in your new images from the pre-image. So go ahead and do that, fill in the table. And then they want to have you look at your table and in general, point AB reflected over the x-axis has what coordinates and point AB reflected over the y-axis has what coordinates. So let's look at, for example, here's point A, B, 3, 2. So when you reflected it over the x-axis, you had 3, negative 2. And then you'll have something different here. And then you can see an example for over the y-axis, 3, negative 3, 12, from 3, 12. So what's, what's going on each time is what they're asking. So do that one, and then we'll continue on. Pause the video from there. All right, so on this next page, number three, on a piece of graph paper, draw a parallelogram in the third quadrant. So here's quadrant three. Reflect this pre-image over the x-axis and describe the location of the image after the reflection. What quadrant is it in? What does it look like? Is it facing the same way? What are the similarities? What are the differences? Now they want you to reflect the image over the y-axis and again describe the location of the image after the reflection. And again in C they have a table for you to fill out similar to this one here. And what happened to each section or what, what happened to each point. When you're finished with that, pause the video, finish that, and then do the check understanding. Once you feel like you've gotten the check understanding under your belt and you understand it and you're comfortable with everything, you can go ahead and go on to the next two pages. So this is the on your own, these two pages. And so this is to do on your own. And so if you feel like you need more practice, if you thought you did well in the check understanding, but you need a little more practice when you're looking at this, go ahead and pause and go back and just review and then come back to this and work on this on your own. And then this homework is simply more practice. You can, it's optional. Um, if you want to do some more problems, go ahead and do those. This next page, the test prep and spiral review. I recommend definitely doing the spiral review, but the test prep is also helpful just to give you practice with different types of questions that might be on standardized testing that relate to this topic of reflection. And then once you're finished with everything, go back to the I can statement and see if you can do what it says to do.